5. Complete the following sentences by using these words. Metals, iron, elements, non-metals, gold, carbon. 1. We use gold in manufacturing of jewels. 2. We use iron in manufacturing of bridges. 3. The positive poles of the electric cells are made of carbon. 4. All the materials you see in your environment are made up of elements. 5. A group of elements that has metallic cluster is known as metals. 6. A group of elements that does not have that doesn't have metallic cluster is known as non-metals. 6. Give reasons for the following. 1. Iron and copper are metals. This is because they are shiny, can be bent or hammered, have high melting and boiling points, and are good conductors of heat and electricity. 2. Sulfur is considered as a non-metal because it's not shiny, can't be bent or hammered, has low melting and boiling points, and is a bad conductor of heat and electricity. 3. Gold and silver are used in making jewelry because they can be shaped as they are metals. 4. Copper is used in the manufacture of electric wires because it's a good conductor of electricity and can be pulled into wires as it's a metal. 5. Iron, copper and aluminium are good conductors of heat because they are metals. 6. Aluminium can be bent or hammered, but the piece of coal cannot. Because aluminium is a metal, but coal is a non-metal. 7. Cooking pans are made up of aluminium. Because aluminium is a good conductor of heat and can be shaped as it's a metal. 8. Carbon, which is graphite is used in making the electrodes, the poles, of dry cells, although it's a non-metal, because it's a good conductor of electricity. 9. Aluminium is considered as a metal, but bromine is a non-metal. Because aluminium is shiny, can be bent or hammered, has high melting and boiling points, and is a good conductor of heat and electricity, but bromine is not. 10. We mustn't approach a nail to an electric source because the nail is made of iron which conduct electricity as it is a metal. 11. The melting point of an iron nail is higher than that of sulfur crystals because iron is a metal but sulfur is a non-metal. 12. Copper is used in making statues and metallic coins because copper is a metal that can be bent or hammered to form sheets. 13. Car chassis and bridges are made of metals, not of non-metals. Because metals can be bent or hammered to form sheets, but non-metals cannot. 14. Iron is used in making bridges and lamp posts. Because iron is a metal that can be bent or hammered to form sheets as it's a metal. 7. What happens if? 1. You connect a graphite rod of a pencil with a circuit having an electric lamp. And why? What will happen? The electric lamp lights. And why does this happen? Because graphite is a good conductor of electricity. 2. You put a piece of wax at one end of a sulfur bar and expose the other end to a candle flame and why? What will happen that the wax does not melt and this is because sulfur is a bad conductor of heat. 3. You heat a piece of copper and some crystals of sulfur to high temperature. The sulfur crystals melt before the piece of copper. 4. You fix a piece of wax at one end of an iron bar and expose the other end to a candle flame. And why? What will happen? The wax melts, and this is because iron is a good conductor of heat, as it's a metal.
so it transfers heat and in consequence the rest happens 5 you connect some sulfur crystals with an you connect some sulfur crystals with an electric circuit that has a lighted lamp and why the lamp will go out and this is because sulfur is a bad conductor of electricity so electricity will be cut off and will not continue 8 compare between metals and non-metals I will not go through this because there is a big comparison in the lecture so you go back to the lecture and you'll find it in details and the, the lecture is in the other playlist 9 mention one use of each of the following 1 iron it's used in making bridges and street lights 2 aluminium it's used in making cooking pans and doorknobs. 3. Gold and silver. They are used in making jewelry. 4. Copper. It's used in making electric wires. 5. Carbon, which is graphite. It's used in making the positive pull of batteries. 10. Look at the opposite figure, then answer the following questions. First of all, what does the other, the following, the opposite figure contain of? It contains a, a copper bar and a pin. And if we look carefully, we try to understand what's going on, then we try to read the questions. What happens, A, what happens to the pin after some time? We have copper bar, and copper bar is a good conductor of heat. So what will happen? The heat will transfer to the wax where the pin is fixed. The wax will start to melt and consequently the pin will fall down. So the pin will fall down. What do you conclude from this activity? What do we understand? What happens? Metals such as copper are good conductors of heat. This means the heat transferred from the candle to the pin through the copper bar this means the heat is transferred in the copper bar so this means the copper bar itself is a good conductor and to be more specific the material which is copper that's the good conductor of heat 11 look at the following figures which represent three electric circuits their answer let's look at figure a it contains a piece of sulfur figure b a piece of copper I figure see a piece of coal then they ask us why which lamp or lamps will light and which will not and we give reasons of course in figure b and c the lamp will light why because copper and coal are good conductors of electricity but the lamp in figure a will not light why because sulfur is a bad conductor of electricity 12. One of researchers does a study about mar marketing grades and elements usage at a certain period and he draws the following graph. What does this graph represent first of all? On the y-axis or the vertical axis we have the percentage of usage and on the horizontal axis we have the elements that are used. What are these elements? They are aluminium, carbon, iron, copper, silver and gold. So now to the questions, mention the most used element in the graph and its uses. So from the graph, it's obvious that aluminium is used by percentage of 80%. So aluminium is the most element used. And what are the uses of aluminium itself? Aluminium is used in the manufacturing of cooking pans, foil paper, and some doorknobs. Number two. The least used element in the graph and its uses. The least one which is used is gold. And what is the most important function of gold? It's used in making jewelry, necklaces, rings, and that stuff. One, the table below shows the properties of two materials. Let's read the properties of both materials. For material 1, the properties of material 1 is solid, conducts electricity, conducts heat, has metallic luster. 
What about properties of material 2? It's solid, conducts electricity, does not conduct heat, does not have metallic cluster. Now, which statement about materials 1 and 2 is most likely to be correct? If we are very careful, we'll find that material 1 is aluminium and material 2 is carbon. Because simply the material 1 has the properties of the aluminium and material 2 has the properties of carbon. Two, the following picture shows a lamp connected to a battery in an electric circuit, an electrical circuit. Which of the following objects connected to points one and two will allow the bulb to glow? We have point one, point two, and then we have some choices. Which one shall we choose in order to make the, light, the lamp light? Of course, we have to find something which is a very good conductor of electricity. We have iron nail, plastic spoon, rubber band, golden stick so all of them are bad conductors except iron nail which is very good conductor so we will choose the iron nail to make the lamp light three Amir is given a sample of an unknown solid substance he wants to know if the substance is a metal or not so write down one property he can observe or measure and describe how this property could be used to help identify whether the substance is a metal or not. Well, if it has metallic cluster, so it's metal, and if it does not have a metallic cluster, so it will be a non-metal. So, question four. You have two pencils. One of them has a complete graphite rod, while the other has a broken one. By using a copper wire, an electric bulb or lamp, and a dry cell, show which pencil has broken graphite rods. First of all, what shall we do? One, we have to connect the two ends of the graphite rod of each pencil to the electric circuit. Then we see what will happen. Two, if the lamp lights, the graphite rod is not broken. This means that rod inside the pencil is continuous there is nothing damaged inside it three if the lamp does not light this means the graphite rod itself from inside is broken five in a cold day imagine that you are making the following activity and what's the activity we have two tables we got ice cube a ice cube b then we are connecting them there is a candle in the middle and there are two rods containing one iron rod and carbon rod. Then they asked us for question A, which ice cube starts to melt faster? Which one? Of course the cube in ice in the ice cube A. Why this happens? Give reason for your choice. Because iron is a metal which is good conductor of heat. While carbon is a non-metal which is a bad conductor of heat. So the ice cube B will melt on itself not due to the effects of heat but for the ice cube it will melt very fast due to the transfer of heat from the candle through the iron rod to the ice cube itself thank you